Starting your pet on a homemade diet means that you have to find all the necessary ingredients yourself. The thought of shopping for the first meal prep is super exciting, but when you walk into the grocery store and you're greeted with aisles of different meats, cuts, and brands, you may start to feel overwhelmed. This is why in this video, I will be going over five things to look out for and avoid when shopping so you can make the right decision between items that can be deceiving. Number one, high sodium meat and seafood. The rule of thumb when shopping for raw meat and canned seafood is to ensure that the sodium content doesn't go above 25 milligrams per ounce or 28 grams of that food's weight. The recommended allowance of sodium per 1000 kcals of food is 200 milligrams for adult dogs, 550 milligrams for puppies, 160 milligrams for adult cats, and 310 milligrams for kittens. So when you see a can of oysters that are 650 milligrams of sodium per three ounces or 85 grams, you know to check for another brand. In general, seafood like canned oysters and fish will naturally be higher in sodium as they come from the ocean. So there will be times where the sodium content can't be helped. But if you have options, always look for the can or container that has the lowest numbers. Some meats can be injected or enhanced with salt as well, so always check their labels. One time I almost checked out with boneless chicken breast before noticing that it was soaked in a solution of broth, sea salt, and carrageenan. Not only was I shocked by the salt, but I couldn't believe that carrageenan was also included. Apparently this is to retain moisture, but after learning about the ill effects it's been known to cause in commercial wet food, I don't think I would even buy this chicken for myself. Number two, expensive choice cuts. Okay, these cuts of meat aren't something you need to avoid for any health purposes, but it's not at all something that's necessary, especially if you have a lot of cheaper options. Many new raw feeders, including myself in the beginning, can be drawn in by new exciting cuts of muscle meat. Some may even think that they're of higher quality as they're a more expensive cut. However, this isn't really the case. If you have the choice between beef stew meat and a filet mignon that's half the weight of the stew meat, go with the stew meat. Cuts like filet come from muscles higher up on the animal that don't get much exercise and are therefore more tender. Cheaper cuts like stew meat are from muscles that get a lot of exercise. Muscle meat like this contains more connective tissue, which gives it a more tough and chewy texture. While tenderness is something that humans value, it usually makes no difference to our pets. When comparing their nutritional value, there isn't much of a difference. However, cheaper cuts do tend to be more lean, while some expensive cuts tend to be fattier. Number three, meat with weight-bearing bones attached. Most pork, goat, and lamb bones, as well as all beef bones, are too dense for even the largest breeds to chew and consume safely. While the meat attached to these bones are more than fine to feed, always remove the bone that's attached and either save it for bone broth or toss it. Weight-bearing bones can cause teeth fractures, intestinal blockages, and are a potential choking hazard. These bones are also often machine cut, giving them a sharp edge that can pose an additional danger. If you're going to buy something for your pet to consume, it might as well be a cut that they can fully eat and utilize. In my opinion, this is only worth buying if you're using that bone to make bone broth. Number four, bleached tripe. A handful of owners new to raw feeding have never heard of green tripe, while others have seen it from raw feeding resources and get inspired to add it to their pet's meal. You can find a ton of offcuts when you actually start looking, like heart, feet, ears, and gizzards. However, you will never find green tripe sold at a grocery store. Green tripe is the unprocessed gastric lining of ruminant animals like cow, sheep, and deer. Uncleaned tripe cannot legally be sold for human consumption, so if you do find tripe at your local grocery store or ethnic market, it's going to be bleached tripe. Bleached tripe has been washed, scalded, and bleached, which basically means that all the beneficial nutrients and enzymes have been removed and is now rendered useless to the diet. Number five, ground meat with high fat content. When it comes to ground meat, one of the most popular ratios of meat to fat is 80% protein, 20% fat. While this is ideal for making hamburgers, it's not so great for adding into a pet's raw meal. 
especially if it's making up a bulk of the muscle meat. If you're feeding a growing puppy, kit, or kitten, or your pet is highly active, you can get away with feeding meats that have a bit more fat as they'll need it for energy and growth. But for pets that are minimally active, this can result in some weight gain if you're feeding it alongside other fatty cuts. Though it's a bit more expensive, if a big bulk of your muscle meat portion is going to be ground meat, it's often better to feed 90-10. If you want to see where I source my meats, watch this next video.